Yes, yes, yeah. You are tuned in to Offering Something. I am your host, Michael Bernia. Feeling so good to be alive. You know I love you. Love you, love you for watching the show. That's the truth, y'all. I also have so much love for our super sweet support system at Enjoy Your Life brand, Riverwalk Brewing Company, and the Higher Education Music and Arts Festival. If you're watching on YouTube, lean on that subscribe button for me. Hit the notifications bell. If you're a streaming TV type, we are out there everywhere on the Plymouth Rock TV channel. And oh boy, we have a pivotal episode for you today with a guest who is a visionary, an entrepreneur, a business strategist, a creative mind, a brand developer, an out-of-the-box thinker, a community leader, an ultra-driven individual, and a powerful woman who is endlessly offering something it is with jumps for joy that i introduce to y'all nancy caswell oh thanks hello Michael. nancy hi how are you i'm <laughs> looking for who you're talking about yes, here. <laughs> just you these are yeah, all I things am. describing you oh thank you i appreciate oh, it I'm, uh, I'm happy to say to be able to say such exceptional things about you how are you feeling today i'm feeling good today yeah, yeah. feeling good i'm comfortable yeah for that's sure that's nice to hear yeah it's Let's... uh it's been a crazy ride for sure well thank you for moving your physical body to this location yeah. today i recognize and appreciate the effort involved Thanks Thank for the you. invitation. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> where were you born? I was born in New Bedford, Massachusetts. New Bedford, Massachusetts. Yeah. It's a nice community. It friendly is. people. Mm -hmm. Welcoming. Somewhere in the middle class. Yeah. Where is it? A lot of, it's it's South Coast. So it's it's definitely a lot of immigrants, um, to be honest with you. My okay. parents immigrated here from Portugal in 1978. There's a lot of Portuguese people um, wow. that live in the community down there and continue to. Um, but I've had Great times in Portugal. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been myself. I really love it there. But uh, it's a big fisherman community. That's really still what it just continues to be. Is this something that you did as a child? Were you out there fishing? I mean, not on those boats. And I certainly <laughs> didn't take up fishing. Um, and I don't think my husband currently would even let me take a fishing pole uh, out. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, my pa grandparents and my parents went out fishing. And, yeah, you don't strike yeah. me as a fisher woman. Is no, that what, how you say no that? not my thing. So you're in New Bedford. How long are you there? You grow up there? You go to high school? Yeah, I went to New Bedford High. I was, uh, and then I left there in 2000 and I uh, went to Johnson & Wales in Providence. Okay. Uh, and then graduated. Did you love it? Did you I loved love it. it. Yeah, yeah, I loved Providence. Well, it was. Did you love Providence more than the school, or the school more than Providence? You know what? Johnson and Wales campus is literally right in downtown it's Providence. One the same. It's yeah. really one of I the same. You. You're kind of walking the streets and mm -hmm. living and going building to building there, um, which is pretty cool. It's a lot like going to uh, a college, like in downtown Boston, really. I got you. Um, but. Yeah, it was still relatively close to New Bedford. It was like a 45-minute drive. My first year, I commuted back and forth, and then I decided to live in the Ooh, city. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good choice there. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you made that change. Yeah. For the but, experience sake also, to be fully submerged in the college lifestyle. Yeah, for sure. That mm -hmm. and just, it was a hard run at driving every yeah. day, and Ugh. yeah, it's wild. A yeah. couple yeah. hours in the car. Yeah. Um, so what was your major there at Johnson and Wales? I went to school for business management and I minored in hotel and restaurant. Okay. Yeah. So still kind of stayed true to what I went to school for. And, uh, so you came out of college there and immediately, where did you live? Post-college back yeah, to New Bedford? Back to New Bedford. Okay. So actually, uh, throughout the seasons well throughout the summer seasons I would always go back to working in restaurants just like every kid basically does like tries to refill the pot before they go back yeah, to school yeah of course and uh mine so, was more of landscaping and then go back gotcha. there you go yeah but uh and so I just <laughs> fell back on always going back and so my junior year actually of college we I did my externship at the place that I was working at and um, I just stayed on as their manager. So for my oh. senior year, I was just kind of like taking Where was an this easy externship? ride. What was the name of the place? It was called the Back Eddy in Westport, Mass. The Back Eddy. 
Okay. Right on the beach, Horse Neck Beach, Dig down it, that yeah. area. Yeah, like right on the line of like Tiverton, Rhode Island, next to Newport, Rhode yeah, Island. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was definitely a summer joint. It closed for like two months of the year. Yeah. Um, so when I graduated college, I stayed there for a couple more years. And at that point, I was like, I'm kind of young to be, you know, only working 10 months a year. So I should probably yeah. look for something full time year round. And uh, a headhunter found me and I moved to Newburyport. The headhunter found you to do a restaurant what? up here in Newburyport, um, Ten Center, back in the day when it was you like were just, Molly's. You were pub. running Ten Center. You were up there. You were like the in the house manager of operations yeah. at Ten Center Street at 23 years old. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little wild. And was think that, that a success for you? A nightmare? Horror story? Such a joy? You know, life is full of tons of experiences, right? Yeah, it you is. just come away with it, thinking about the things that I loved and the things that I hated and things I never want to do to myself ever again. Okay. <laughs> Did you learn something? Uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I mean, I learned how much I loved the community, how much yep. I loved Newburyport. Honestly, I really uh, felt like a super, you know, connection to the people that live here and their interest in wanting, you know, great dining experiences. Yeah. And respecting the history behind the architecture that the buildings had. So it was pretty cool to dive into doing something at that age that kind of, I don't know, pushed me outside of my own um, past experience because right. I had never like built a restaurant. I had never, you know, managed a budget on how to build a restaurant. Right down. You were picking the menus. This is okay. Yeah. Fully all in. Fully Say all, all in. I got to tell you, and I didn't know, Wowza. I probably didn't know half of what I was doing at the yeah. time. It was a lot of Q and A to calling my old friends. Everybody else thought you knew what you were yeah, doing. Yeah, for sure. I guess that's what matters most. So right? was it the working at 10 Center Street that helped you to develop this concept of becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, yeah, I think so. I started working there, and it, you know, the restaurant business is a grind, right? And the hours it are, seems as such. Yeah, it's such a crazy grind, and it's so many hours, and it's a whole like you really just got to buy into it because it's operating at all hours of the day, whether it's yeah. morning while you're prepping, or you know, people are drinking at midnight or one o'clock in the morning, right? And so there's really no opportunity to really shut it off. So once you start buying into it, and then you realize you're kind of good at it. The next step is to either get out of it, yep. really, or and pivot into something else, or to think about if I'm going to work this hard, I might as well do it for myself. And so right. that's the road I took. So in taking this road, you're saying the hours of operation are pretty extreme here. Mm -hmm. you're, you're looking at 100 or more hours a week where your phone can ring mm -hmm. or you're already there and somebody's tapping you on the shoulder with a question, you got to deal with something. Um, you have to be in mental and physical shape mm -hmm. like the utmost so uh, are you does physical fitness weigh into this for you do you just become physically fit because you're running around like crazy all yeah. the time or do you have to implement that into your life and think about i gotta i gotta make sure that i'm Staying, staying in there. shape mentally and physically in order to be able to operate over here yeah totally i think that yeah, there's definitely times where I go through my like humps of like just being so mentally exhausted and emotionally mm -hmm. exhausted and then I start to feel it in my body. But 100 percent like the activity behind it and the level of um, energy it takes to operate and the other side of it is the work you have to do inside. You know, it's the emotional piece for sure, the mental piece, the spiritual piece of it. Like, I mean, what, this is what are you doing for yourself in order to find mental clarity and yeah. peace amongst the obvious chaos that has ensued as of the past year, uh, year and a half. That's been a struggle for sure. I'll be honest with you. When March 16th happened and the government shut down <laughs> restaurants, I think I went into total panic mode. Like, um, you know, it was just this level of like nothing you could ever plan for, you know, could have ever brought us to where we were, right? Yep. And so, and the one thing that we know is that in this world eating and drinking is america's number one pastime and so yes. there's that level Needs of like continue. what are we going to do like even personally how do i socialize right yeah right. and so um the last year i found myself kind of honestly coming off this level of obsession with work um i found that it, not that it was unhealthy but just more that it was so all things consuming yeah and I realized that I needed to take a break from it all. And the reality was I kind of felt like I had a little PTSD because I was so trained 
after yeah, all okay. these years yeah. to respond to an 8 a.m. call, to respond to a 6 p.m. call. So did you actually not respond to anything for a certain number of days where you weren't checking your email? I'm just going to see if anything's really wrong. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> I'd say that it took me about three weeks to make sure my team was cool and like everybody was going to get a check from the government yeah. before I was like, all right. I can sure? take a second. Yeah. 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 We're fine. It's going to be all right. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Good. but I wanted to like help where I could too, you know, like I, the reality was, was sitting still isn't my jam. It's not who no. I am. It, it, I'm not settled, just like relaxing. Um, uh, so I was like, maybe I should just like go help, you know, tender crop farm and what work at the I grocery do? store yeah. and like help them bag. Cause they're getting slammed, you know, right, like yeah. how do you help? Um, which is how we dug into feeding all the nurses. So we ended up doing almost 4,000 um, nurse feeds in the last year where we... Who's we ended up doing this? So it just happened all of a sudden. You're like, oh, yeah, I got 4,000 meals. Let's go. Yeah, so we basically... Well, first it started with some community-driven um, investors that were just like, hey, we want to like feed the frontline workers. How do we do that? And then it became, um, you know... The state came down and wanted to fund a couple of big feeds to larger nice. hospitals. Um, and they went into a uh, kitchen kind of fundraiser um, that came out of Boston. And then they just started to align that said, if you have a kitchen with people that are working in it, can you do 20 they meals? Can you meals. do 50 yeah. meals? Yeah. Um, in just a way that we could not inundate. I think hospital cafeteria staff yeah. and try to get them as much food as they could and do it in a gracious way for realizing that frontline run. They uh, want workers. to recognize yeah. where somebody's putting in some effort mm -hmm. at some sort of great level of risk. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. And hopefully feeding them gave them something. It gave them a smile. Yeah. Nothing else. <laughs> A full belly, even if they didn't smile, <laughs> it did something. Yeah. Yeah. I it tell you that. No one's like, Psh. People buying me food. <laughs> yeah. Forget about this. Yeah. Jerks. Um, so let's be clear. You are the owner of Caswell Restaurant Groups, mm -hmm. right? And that is a high concept culinary hospitality development and management firm. Mm -hmm. I clearly just read those <laughs> words there, but that's the description. Good. Now, in order to have a restaurant group, you must have more than one restaurant. Is this accurate? Yes, it's accurate. You'd want to have more than one, but okay. you could say that you are a group if you're doing it for the sake of, you know, building your structure in the future. You okay. Know? What was the first, your first restaurant? It was Saya here it in was Newburyport. Saya. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and what year was this? That was 2010. 2010. Um, so it opened up. Mm-hmm. And it worked perfectly. There was no curveballs and everything was just so, so right. Mm -hmm. Is that the truth? It really, honestly. <laughs> Come on. I, so I, I kid you not, I bought my first restaurant on Craigslist. You bought the restaurant on Craigslist. Yep, Listen yep. to this. I was okay. 27 years old. So, oh, so you, if your listeners or your watchers. Were you looking for restaurants on Craigslist? Well, you know, what was how, so wild how, was basically uh, I was working in Boston after I had left um, 10 Center because mm -hmm. I totally burnt out there and I kind of left abruptly. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a couple months, figure out what my next step is. Yeah. And uh, so I wasn't really, you know coming through town much and then a couple of people were like hey do you know this restaurant's up for auction like what do you think what do you Ooh. think and then it came to me that it was uh like just as easy as being placed on craigslist because the owner needed to you know get rid of it as quick as they could yep and it fit within my budget because i really didn't have one right and so um yeah, and so I just dove into it, and it's actually, so I, I opened Saya there, it was there for two and a half years, and then it started getting like one of the most difficult tables to get out of the city, um, best restaurant outside of the city. I, it was everything. It was it everything. It opened, and like everybody was just talking about Saya, and I know you couldn't get a table in there, like, I knew I wasn't even trying to get, I wasn't prepared <laughs> enough to do whatever was necessary to be able to go in there, yeah. I'm like, I'll just always look inside of there. Yeah. And so, so we, we blew it up, and we ended up moving it across the street to where Rockfish was. Yes. And that was a little wild for me because it's a very vertical building and uh, three floors. Unique. It's super hard to work. I mean, we go ba going back to, like, fitness piece of it, you know? <laughs> yeah. oh, it's like yeah. climbing those stairs up and down however many times you can. That is, yeah. yeah, it's a little <laughs> wild place. ride there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But, um, yeah. And so... so 
Did it work? Was it working better in that new location? You know, when we grew it there, it certainly had its challenges, like you would expect, because we went from like 45 seats to yeah. 140 seats. But yes. it did take into consideration all the things that people didn't get to have in its original location with it not being able to accommodate large parties or even right. like any, you know, sp celebratory dinners, like rehearsal stuff. So when we moved it across the street, I still loved that space that originally say I was in and I had the lease that I was committed to and so after the construction happened and we moved it I opened brine my oyster bar in that yeah. space and uh, up until this last you know COVID stint um, the reality was it was booming there brine was totally crushing also mm -hmm. through the hottest things going on yeah. yeah but when COVID happened first off the seating capacity is super challenging in that space. It was really like we could have 12 people at a time. Yeah. The second part of it was that raw, it's a raw concept menu. So like, you know. Before we get into what happened yeah. with COVID. So when you're thinking about what am I going to put in this new location, did that vision come to you through the experiences uh, of Saya? And you're like, okay, now I know, oh, you know, it'd be cool to have a spot. Like, see, there's a niche for this. Oh, there's a lane for that. And is that... Did having Saya really assist in developing Brian? Or you just like, oh, I don't want it to be like this. I'll make it something totally different. I got to say that when I choose to travel, I always try to do it based on culinary experience. Mm -hmm. And so I had been to California. I'd been to San Francisco. And I really was super interested in that kind of California farm to table, super fresh style food. And also just like a really sweet San Francisco oyster bar. Yeah. And I wanted it to be casual. I wanted it to be, you know, super accommodating and like just inviting. And so when I started thinking about the menu, I was like, is our city ready to have raw food? Like, do they understand it? Do they get it? Yeah. Um, and I think because the space was so small and intimate and because they could actually see and understand what the food was, people bought into it. Quickly, I thought oysters could potentially just be a trend, but then it's like here to stay. Everybody's yeah. loving oysters and still crushing oysters regardless of the day or season. 100. So then these both of these places are doing great, and here we are 2019, 20, mm -hmm. and then the world changes. Um, let's talk about that. So what, what was the impact on... Saya. Yeah. So actually, uh, what had happened with me with Saya was more that I had opened a restaurant in Boston, which became a total beast. And to be honest, uh, I don't in think the I was sense prepared. of like a huge success or a complete disaster. A, a huge success. Yeah. But it just required so much of my energy. You know, we hit the ground running and then it was just like everybody was talking about us. Media was talking about us. It was just like constantly this inability for us to like catch a wave and ride it. We were just yep. like literally just totally crashing like all the time. Um, and like it just never had a feel good moment that we were like getting it and understanding it and knew what we were had signed up for. And so I found myself the last like two years really always being in Boston and focusing I got on you. it. So going into 2020, I was thinking like I got to figure out like how I – like work this because I can't be in Newburyport as much as I'm in Boston. And the end was really that I believed in Brine and I wanted to expand Brine and think about moving it into a new location because my lease was coming up. Yep. Um, or I had to think about, you know, downsizing and like partnering. Maybe a chef would want to buy into the concept or whatever. Gotcha. I ended up selling Saya which was really hard to believe in the middle of COVID. Did you that, sell that it on Craig? Did. Yeah, yeah you no, sell I didn't it on sell Craig it on Craig's. Oh, like, that would have been monumental. But um, no, I didn't. I'm surprised I, that <laughs> wasn't the case. I Just, know, actually. I don't think, uh, I probably should have put it out there. No, I sold I'm it really to I'm really not surprised. It seems ridiculous that things like restaurants are on sale on Craigslist I know. to me. But, yeah. I, uh, I sold it. And I honestly thought the deal would fall through because of COVID. But, you know, again, people are just love the community and love what we mm. have to offer. And our numbers were there and they felt good about it and they bought it. And so and you're happy with the selling price. Yeah, I am. I'm happy with the selling place. I'm actually happy that it's something that our community doesn't have. So, right. like, I think that it you know gives us a little bit of diversity on what the are street. they offering there that our community doesn't have they're doing a lot i think they'll end up doing live music but they're just kind of a 
cocktail bar, a little bit more like vibey and yeah. like more like, you know, mood driven, not so much like food, high end food or like yep, fork yep, and knifing yeah, stuff, yeah. but it's more about the experience of like come in, sit, relax and enjoy yourself. I got and it. They, they like honestly, the decor in there is pretty amazing. I think people are going to be pumped by it. You think um, there are individuals that have been helpful to you that have actually contributed to your success? Are there people that have helped you out along the way? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think for sure I've had some mentors along the way that, you know, taught me a lot about restaurants and how to operate and how to care about them. And then I think that, you know, there's a lot of my team that I hope that they know that they drive me, right? They drive me to be more creative, to push the envelope, to constantly be changing. Um, how valuable is it to have a team and how honest and genuine are you able to be with your team mm -hmm. knowing there's a hierarchy in place? I think that most of my team would say that I'm so human with them. Like it's incredible. Like everybody's got a direct line with me. And yeah. the reality is, is that, uh, you know, without them, I, I would never be able to do this work, right? If they don't buy in, if the culture is not there, if I don't have a tribe, the, the most important thing that one can build in an organization is a tribe, people that get it, people yep. that will, you know, put soldiers for you. Um, I think that's super important. But like a tribe I also, in the sense of a community surrounding the yeah, effort. Okay. I mean, honestly, if you, my whole motto with my team is I'm never going to ask them to do something that I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't do myself. And so I think that goes a long way with them. And, the re you know, I, I would like to think that they know that if I'm asking them to do it, I would do it if I could. Yeah. But, yeah, they buy into it, and they've been super successful. They've pushed me along the way. Um, obviously, my husband is incredible. You know, this yeah. long ride is crazy. And <laughs> he's just like, you're working, you're not working, him. you're here, yeah. you're here, yeah. When but, you're home, you're asking me all these questions about work, telling me these stuff. Oh, God, I love you. I yeah, love you. it's Good hard. Thing. It's hard. I mean, hmm. and he, and the biggest part, too, is like, listen, no when escape. you're in business with your your partner, yeah. like, that's super hard, too, right? Like, of course. Literally, it's like there's no shut off to talking about work. Or at least we try now, but there's no level of even in the last year you know it's like your business partners and you're yeah. worried that three of your businesses are basically going to shutter yes it's yeah. not the easiest task so to, to find that support yeah, yeah it's hard for sure but so was there a point throughout this COVID that you thought the bottom of everything was going to fall out were you like oh my golly this could be like on pause these are done for a little while was yeah. that a realistic thought yeah it was a realistic thought you know i kept thinking like I would drive into Boston and I kept thinking, man, it is eerie here. Like there is not a soul walking the street. And mm -hmm. um, that's a huge nut, you know, that it's an expensive building. It's an expensive month um, to be closed, literally between lease, you know, and renting and utilities and all of that. Um, small businesses, are, you know, were wildly affected, but yeah. restaurant industry was was ridiculous, you know, and non-existent. Yeah, so Ghost I just town, took the opportunity. Tumbleweeds blowing by. Yeah. Ugh, it was crazy, yeah. like literally to think like you'd open the door, even to try to do takeout, and like maybe you'd get an order for takeout. Like it was like people were even scared of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, washing it, the groceries. Yeah. Oh. It was crazy. I do mean, touch the, do you guys touch the food? Yeah. Do you touch it when you make it? Yeah, it's. If, yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> was. And then some people thought like we transferred it any which way we could transfer it. You know, it was through the HVAC system. It's through the air quality. It was through the table touch. It was through the menus. It was through who food knows? cooking. Yeah, it was, knows? you know, it was wild. Um, I just took the time to try to stay as positive as I could in the last year. And I just started to think, what ways can I get out of it? And ultimately the only way I can probably get out of, out of this is starting to advocate for myself. And so that's what we did. So we got together a small group of independent restaurant tours. We now refer to ourselves as Mass Restaurant United. Yeah. And we started to take a seat at the table and start asking government to think about us. So consider we, this. Yeah, so we started talking about, you know, third party delivery fees. We started talking about, um, you know, finding a ways to discuss lease, um, being like leases either or rent being frozen in some fashion, um, taxes being deferred. We ended up getting some grant relief from the state, which ended up going across the board to a yep. lot of the industry professionals. Um, that was the MGCC grant 
it was like up to 75,000 each uh, restaurant tour and your or small business. group played a role in accomplishing yeah, this, making this happen. Yeah, we still do. We still do. Yeah, we continue to advocate. We were on the calls with um, Independent Restaurant Coalition for the White House and trying to get money, and we got the Restaurant Relief Act passed as well, and that's coming soon. So I love that. The on, uh, only energy was to just put it forth that if even if I were to close, I wanted to give hope to somebody else that could have potentially come out on the yeah. other side, you yeah. know? Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. So let's get back to the good world. People are going out, having so much fun. What is it about your restaurants, aside from the fact that, let's say Brian here, aside from the fact that it's an oyster bar, what is it that differentiates it from the rest? Are you providing exceptional service? Is the lighting perfect, the decor? <laughs> are you paying extra? What is it? Oh, well, first of all, it's always about ambiance, right? Ambiance. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's lighting, it's music, it's the whole, like, you know, you got to buy so into it. thought behind the music yeah. that gets played and the lighting. For sure. I hate to hang a menu on a window because I just feel like people don't yeah. really fully understand it. Walk in, get greeted by somebody, have human connection, listen to music, smell yeah. good food. And, and then like, you know what? open the menu. Maybe I like, don't know okay. what this means, but I'm willing to try it if it smells that good, right? Um, no menus stuck to the front window. <laughs> None. That's my jam. Honestly, uh, people yeah, get that mad is at the me. the jam right there. Yeah. No, I love you for that. Do yeah. not listen to anybody that's mad at you for that. Yeah. That's respectable. I mean, I nowadays it. people can I go support. on the website if they're that kind of person and they're going to shop the internet first. I totally get it. Respectfully, I understand, especially if you're going to entertain a yeah. couple people at the table and you don't really know what their palate is like or whatever. But if it's just you and, you know, a partner and you're going out to eat or a friend I always find the most enjoyable times are times in which you actually don't plan for them. They're the exactly. most unexpected. Oh, look at that place. Yeah. I mean, if you think about going out to eat, probably some of your best memories are those when you were like, didn't expect to even have that good of a time. Or you wake up and you're like, what happened last night? You know? And that's that <laughs> yeah. moment that's yep. like, it was a good time, you know? Um, let's talk about the look and the branding of your establishments is this something that you think is very valuable in the success of the restaurant do you spend weeks and months pondering these things what's the logo going to look like what's the color scheme the slogan mm -hmm. or do you like no this style works let's do this badge thing bang game on my husband would say he probably would want me to be more consistent in more things but the reality is is i like them all to have their own identity um and yeah, I try to keep it into like I try to keep in the back of my mind, you know, how people are going to eat and how I want them to eat here and how comfortable do I want them to feel when they're here. So even right now, so we're moving, Brian. So I didn't end up signing my lease at the space that I was in for 12 yep. years. Originally, say it then became Brian. I uh, oh, decided yes. to leave that space. 12 years. And I'm going into another place right next door called Fowls. Yep. And uh, so now it'll become, it's going to go from a 45 seat restaurant to a 90 seat restaurant. But now it's all based on the experience of what's happened the past year. How comfortable do people feel? Do they want to be six feet apart? You know, are we going to get back to a place of eating with 10 people, 12 people? So I want yeah. all these tables to come back together, right? Yeah. I'm thinking about uh, the so days good. where the bar was too deep mm. and like hoping that there's enough Leaning bar on space. on people, no problem. Yeah. Can I, is this, oh, yeah. Got it. I'm thinking about those things because yeah. I don't think we're too, I mean, listen, is it going to happen in the next year? Probably not. But when it does come back, it's going to be roaring. It's going to be wild. And you're going to see everybody so like good. so jazzed and ready to be out. Speaking of good things, mm -hmm. do you like gifts? I do like gifts. You like gifts? Yeah. I'm not good at receiving gifts, but I like gifts. I'm a better well, gift you're gonna have, If I give you the <laughs> gift, you're going to be the recipient of the <laughs> okay. gift. You comfortable? I'm Still comfortable. With it? All right. Yeah. I'm giving you a gift. Ah, thank you. Oh. This okay, is this is the gift. You open it now. I'm opening it? Okay. Yeah, you got it. Let's go through it. Let's see what's inside there. Ooh, some white tissue paper. That's... I mean, I love it. <gasps> oh, yeah. I am a I hat I want you girl. to pull them out one at a time. You can drop them on the floor. Let's see what we got. Them? Enjoy your life hat. Oh, yeah. You look good in Wait, yellow. Wait, these are all for me? Yeah, of course they are. Oh, my Let's goodness. go. Let's see it. All really, right. I want you to take them out. All right, I'm assuming that's a that's buff. That's, that's one of these jams right here. Bingo. Oh, we got 
we got candy. A couple little snacks in case you get hungry on the long drive home, you know? That's so amazing. Keep you feeling good. That's okay. my new album because I just like to push my music into people like that. I love it. Yep. New by like a year old. Oh, That's new the beers. Enjoy Your Life brand beer. Oh my golly, so delicious. And you, what's this taste like? Tell me what's up with this. It's super light, a 4.4, yeah. completely crushing it. A little bit of citrus to it, full body. You want a job? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like yeah. that's a good conference. Uh, like you can yeah. sell your it's beer. It's sunshine and Look free time in a can. <laughs> I um, got a painting. I got some masks. This is amazing. Like, thank let's you. Let's keep so it amazing. Much. Yeah, of course. Oh God, so oats much. overnight. You're gonna like that. You're gonna like that. Even if you're not an oats person, when you do it, you're gonna be like, maybe I this am an oats amazing. person. I mean, honestly, maybe. there's so many gifts in here. We NBPT. You know, because you are. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Oh, it just still goes. Oh, golly. That's a good one right there. And enjoy your life. Racer back tank top. Hopefully when 5Ks are back, I'll be able to wear one. (laughs) You. Thank you. Same jam. There you are. It's amazing. Appreciate it. Who's, I love you all of the that. branding and logo stuff yourself. Oh, as we talk thank about you. Thank you. Yes. So valuable. Thank you. You're, you're so very welcome. Let's get to know you as a, as a human a little bit more. I know we just deep into the restaurant and the F&B world. Is that what it's called? Is that hip? F&B? Yeah, F&B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, food and beverage. Yeah. Um, you like to travel? Yeah. Okay. Destinations that bring you this big old smile. You're like, <sighs> that's where I'm going. You know what? It's going to still be based on food because I always pick it up. Ah, It's fine. We're in Italy. I've been to Italy. I love Rome. (laughs) I love Amalfi Coast. Um, Honestly, I like to go places like that I know where I'm going to land in, but then I always end up renting a car with my husband and driving the coast and figuring the rest out, Mm. which has been super cool. We've been to Portugal. We've been to Greece. Um, So, but honestly, I love places even close to us up here. Like we have such great treasures with Nantucket, with Martha's Vineyard. Um, even heading north, like I like Portland, Maine. I think it's really I nice up Portland there. I love Portland too. That's um, a day trip jam right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, within the states, of course, like I really like I uh, I really like any part of Florida. To be honest with you, I like Miami for the food scene. Yep. I like Lauderdale for the food scene. Um, I like. I mean, I'm a wine girl, so Napa. I'd like Napa. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. So the reason for traveling or travel is kind of it's driven by beautiful location, food, mm-hmm. and obviously the peace of mind that you yeah. receive from traveling. What kind of music do you listen to when you're driving in the car with your husband? Is there music on? Is it husband? Did yeah. I say that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're driving, the windows are down. You know what? I'm kind of all over the place with music. Sometimes I'm like really funny and I'm singing like old 80s music because I just love it. You know? For instance, like you're talking about Journey. Yeah. Journey, okay. I could go Journey. I mean, that's like reminds me of like <laughs> yeah, yeah. last call at a bar that I miss so much. But um, oh yeah, um, we all yeah. I mean, though. even being so silly, like you know, I mean, she's like Aaliyah back in the day, yep. and, you know, obviously before she passed away. But um, uh, even the crazy like, you know, I mean, I just watched Britney Spears documentary, so I, I can't pretend like I'm not a fan of Britney Spears. <laughs> You love but Britney I, Spears? You're I mean, singing along. Sh- sh- <laughs> driving with like one foot out the window. Yeah, yeah. The thing that only girls do somehow. <laughs> like, how is that up there? Don't um, they see the danger involved? I'll, I'll listen to like country if I'm like hanging out. Honestly, I'm kind of all over the place. And of course, like. You like catchy, good music. And ca- I like it. catchy music that I can catchy. like memorize and connect with the words. Like, And then I've got like kitchen music always playing. Kitchen which music? Is, yeah. Which is, is that like, like my guys, Coltrane? Like, what's kitchen music? Kitchen music can be all over for them. It could be like all based on like if they're creative mode, it's a little bit more like heavy rock. If it's kind of them being silly and they're ready to like go on kitchen, a busy, like, this, like hype music. Let's get back to you calling it kitchen music. Like did your parents call it kitchen music? No, like the music in the kitchen? I think or? that chefs have this really interesting ah, creative element to listening to music. You know what I mean? Heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Th- it's like either like really intense or it's like really like hype music before they're about to get into a few shift. times that i've been like taken through the kitchen to get to a stage i've noticed that the music is louder than i expect because yeah i'm like oh they're cooking they're concentrating but it's loud music yeah whenever yeah. a kitchen in a restaurant is quiet i either assume it's because they're totally weeded and they <laughs> don't want anybody <laughs> distracted by any music whatsoever <laughs> and they just want to be in their own thoughts like, and i'm like okay nobody's talking off. today yeah 
<laughs> a bunch of high guys making food. What scares you the most at this point in your life? Uh, what you are know, you afraid of? Let's not talk about like business failing. What yeah. scares you? Getting old? No. Are you troubled no. by that? Are you getting old? I don't we think don't I'm getting age. old. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, I just I still have this. I expect the, honesty from you. I don't think fear is something that like. I mean, I don't hold on to it that much. I mean, like I the guess, '80s T-shirts, you have no fear. None. I really don't. You and Doug I Flutie. mean, like I'm scared to die, but that seems so like extreme. Are you scared to die? I am, and I'm only scared to die because I don't want to hurt loved ones, not hold for on my now. own selfish reason. Okay, you're scared to die. I can respect mm -hmm. that. But like, when does that come into effect in your life? You're like, oh, hold on, I'm gonna be scared right now. <laughs> Like how know, do you how does it implement itself? I know. This well, you know to what? Die. There's like that reflection point for me. That's like, well, that was kind of that could have been a minute. That could have been something, Ooh. right? Like, and even just like uh, with the COVID piece. I mean, there was a point when like my husband called me. He's like, hey, I'm vaccinated, and I was like, wow, we're good. We're wow, gonna be look good. At that. You know. You but didn't it wasn't die. like in the whole year of me being like, oh my God, we're going to die. It was just in that reflective place Does, of like, so all it right, doesn't we're bring good. you day to day anxiety. You don't no. walk around like, oh, oh no, I'm not scared to touch something or take me? a drive. Yeah. Uh, what's happening here? Am but I, I have dying control next? issues. So, like, <laughs> you have control issues? Yeah, I can be a little, uh, I, I'm scared to not be in control of things that I know I need to handle. So I, I like things like that freak me out when I can't be in control of something like being in a plane. And I'm like, okay, I'm not really like when you go out to eat, you like order for the whole table. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one starts ordering unless they get the okay from you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Are they're we not ready? Like, yeah, unless know. there's something else that you want to do, you know? Yeah. They, uh, they tend to be that way with me or they're just like, hey, Nancy, like, why don't you pick the wine? I'm like, that's fine, you know. But it's funny because there's times where I'm like, guys, I'm totally down for just like chicken fingers and like a fried fish sandwich. That's like my favorite meal ever. And everybody's like, no, no you, know. you probably don't want to eat there. And I'm like, but I, I would because I would like to eat there. Going real deep here. Mm -hmm. You think that world peace is an actual option at any point in your lifetime? You know, I Peace think we're making the world decisions now in our current world that are, you know, baby steps getting us to a place where we can listen to each other more and educate ourselves more. Yeah. Um, is it still a very scary time? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, there's still massacres happening every yeah. day and there's gun control issues that we have to take into consideration and really start looking at. Um, From my own understanding, you mm -hmm. personally... Mm -hmm would be into a peaceful world. Of course. Okay. Yeah. But that's not everybody's answer. Yeah. Some people, because there would be world peace if that's what everybody wanted, well, yeah, right? I guess Wouldn't that so. be going yeah. on? Yeah. You're not going outside just punching people in the face for living. No. Yeah. You're no. being pretty peaceful out there. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I think at the end of the day, the reality, <laughs> the, the other piece of that is that it's also a... Uh, you know, mental illness is a thing that people need to think about deeply. There are right? exceptions to everything. Yeah. Is there an exception to this? Yeah. The customer is always right. Oh, boy. You know what? I don't know what. I I've never worked in a restaurant. Like I rarely deal with so that. That's so level. My staff's probably going to watch this, and they're going to be like, you said it on my yeah. Gilbert Hair show. <laughs> what is it? They weren't always right. I think that in the end, they're, they might not always be right, only because their experience has never taught them any differently, and so it's ultimately okay. just about educating them. It's kind of like their life, and you're like, I'm not going to step in and try to fix what's been like this whole, uh, yeah. Yeah. But do you, do you ever fold to the point, like, no, okay, bend, bend, yeah, just do, just like keep the guy happy, keep the guy happy. Yeah. Do you ever go, you know what? We're not going to keep that guy happy. Yeah. I'm going to go out and go, we really appreciate you attempting to eat here, but we think it's time for you to carry on. <laughs> has it ever elevated yeah. to such a level? Oh, yeah, it's elevated oh, it to that, such a level, yeah. And I how mean, has that gone? You know, it's never parties. easy. Sometimes it's like I somebody in the group, awkward. some people in the group kind of already feel the energy shifting at the table. So they're already kind of uncomfortable themselves. Some of them already try to like push them, that person already out the door before anybody else has to do it. And it's not just driven towards like alcohol, like shutting no, somebody off. No, I wasn't even off. thinking yeah. alcohol. But I was I, thinking like dining experience, ask the you to bring the ketchup, oh, there's cheese on this, what's wrong with you people? And then like, it just like gets to a point of you like, 
yeah. carry on. Name calling can can be a thing in restaurants. Um, what whatever style restaurant it is, whether it's a quick service restaurant, full service restaurant, people are doing or bar, that. People still name call. It's still going to be a thing. I mean, I don't mean to smile. I'm just so surprised. Yeah, it's That's... still a thing. Oh yeah, you would ask somebody even now in the last year, be like, hey, can I have your name and phone number? And someone's like, no, you asshole. I'm not giving you my name and phone number. I'm like, well, all right. Well, so there that goes. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day <laughs> there with whatever it is you got going on. Um, when things do even out, are you going to, a little part of you there, Nancy, who I know loves being creative mm -hmm. and, and overcoming obstacles, are you going to kind of miss all of the pivoting that is necessary and the moving target and like, ooh, we got to do this now. Ooh, now we can do this. Let's try this. Like, there's been no real sense of calm and like, all right, now mm -hmm. we're on this thing. You've been like, nah, nah. no, mm -hmm. like, now we can do that. Okay, open up the outside. Oh, got to do the outside. 14 feet, 6 feet. Mm -hmm. Can't have people. So are you going to miss that, you think, a little bit? I always said that we weren't pivoting. Exciting. We were evolving, right? And so there was still some silver lining stuff in the business. I feel like that you were you using like... the word pivoting, though. I was. You know, I, I checked some of your social media things. You're talking yeah. the word pivoting. Yeah. Has, it's super. It's right up there with social distancing and its oh, level yeah. of popu popularity attained throughout this. For sure. Yeah. But I've thought to myself, instead of instead of just like pivoting and doing the whole like just, you know, chasing the tail, if it could evolve into something like if we could take from it and say, you know, fried chicken buckets, who would have thought? <laughs> like KFC is a real yeah. thing and that's why they've been yes, successful. Right. So yeah, let's do it on there. Wednesdays. Yeah. Like maybe that shouldn't go away. Um, How'd I the think, fried chicken bucket go? Oh my God, it was crazy. People like love it. literally, I was like, this Did you, is you insane. You had to find out where to get the buckets. Yeah, yeah. I literally, and, and to be honest, everybody. Did you do an actual bucket? Yeah. Was it, Everybody in the country was doing fried chicken buckets because wow. when you went to go order it, the company was like, we're really back Dude, ordered we're like on fried chicken buckets. I don't know what's happening here, but <laughs> um, people are loving no, fried chicken. No, I would say, I, 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 think, I think that I'm, uh, I create chaos. It's just how I work and operate. When I get bored, I get like, mm. okay, this is too much of the same and we need to shake things up. Um, and so, so, like, if the businesses were all working, it was all functioning, there was steady growth, you didn't have to be involved, you probably wouldn't just be hanging out, like, getting no, your nails go done in there and, and going like, to the beach. You'd be like, it. yeah, or like, <laughs> oh, this is working too good. Let's start something else so we yeah. can maybe get some curveballs in my life here that I can figure out how to get through. I do so much with other nonprofit related things that I try to fill my tank when I can doing other things, whether it's relative to like, you know, helping a different organization or sitting on a different organization or helping somebody else. Yep. So I think that when I find the downtime to be able to do something for myself, I don't always know what to do with it. So I end up just like deflecting and being like, oh, I'll go help and do this or yeah. I'll change it up. Yeah. Or, or I'll just go hang in the restaurant and serve because it's fun and it brings me back to like what I actually love oh, doing, you know? Oh, look at that. Yeah. You are human. Yeah. I like yeah. that. I mean, I served last weekend. Um, so the hot thing right now, the, the current is the new location for Brian mm -hmm. in Newburyport, Massachusetts. And the space is much larger than mm -hmm. the previous. Is it three times the size? Two and a half, yeah. Two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. How many seats are going to be in the space with the COVID situation? 90. 90 seats going on in the building. Mm -hmm. How far are we from opening? We're about, I'd say, three and a half weeks. Three and a half weeks from whatever today is, mm -hmm. late April. I'm thinking May 15th, May 16th. You heard it here first. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah. is it like everything's painted? The tables are there? The artwork? Where'd you get your artwork? You know what we did? We still had a good amount of artwork stuff that we had done with Alan Bull from yeah. town um, because we do a lot of like Alan play on Bull. oyster, you yeah. know. Um, is Alan painting faces. oysters for He does. You? He oh, painted my that. logo, yeah. Hi, the world is your oyster. Alan knows I you love just him. had the yeah. wrong fork. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, but yeah, so I mean, we're mimicking the space almost to a T. That was the benefit of literally right, going right. right next door. Yeah. So exposed brick, a lot of the same furniture pieces, still the marble bar. But, um, yeah, it's it's going to be close to to go. The only is there challenge... some change to the shape there? It was slightly awkward in times past. Yeah, it's still going to be. No, we cleaned it out so it's like a perfect square inside. Okay, That'll yeah. be nice. The only challenge we're experiencing now with the city is like, you know, 
coming out of where we were a year ago. We just need operable windows and like yeah. we need to make sure those windows can open. Okay, and so, so is there some sort of like this is an old building, you can't change the windows thing going on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We don't have to get too far into that because <laughs> I know it's a touchy subject yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. I understand that you want to have air in there. Yeah. And I respect that. At the end, all I want to do is preserve the building to the best way I can, but still mm. have a profitable business inside to keep the lights on, right? Otherwise, it's just going to be a museum. We're so. just looking to open up some windows here. Yeah. 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 For the safety yes. and health of others. <laughs> Makes sense. I like how you say that. <laughs> oh, so I have. I don't have to say this. I want to say this. Mm -hmm. There are many reasons that I've asked you to come here today to mm -hmm. be on the show. Um, I'm going to talk about two of them. Okay. The first one that is the most valuable to me that makes me feel so good like even like you know you don't we just met today this yeah. is our first time sitting down and talking mm -hmm. but i have feelings of excitement and happiness for you in your life as i watch you succeed in creating your own success right mm -hmm. you had a vision you had these ideas and you made them real so i want to celebrate the fact that without you these things don't exist uh. You made them real. You could have done nothing. Not that you had taken some other lane, but you had these thoughts that you took the you took action on them. I respect that. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Thank and I, I just want to say those words <laughs> to you. You know, I don't want them to be assumed. The second the second thing in this here, and I think that you have reiterated this throughout our conversation, is that not only are you successful. But in the world of business, but in your regular life, as you walk around, as I can see from our conversation here, as we stare into each other's eyes, and mm -hmm. I can confidently say this, is that you are offering something that is positive to the community and to the people that you come across. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say to you and give you these roses that aren't really here <laughs> while you can smell All them. All the shirts. Not, yes. I appreciate the uh, fact that you're a good you. person and you're doing nice things and you're putting in work to help others it's beautiful thank you awesome great job i'm proud of you for whatever <laughs> that is worth and i think that it's really nice for grown people to be able to give compliments to people i i don't know you mm -hmm. the fifth wall whatever it is the ego the boundary that stuff yeah. is out the window i'm comfortable to tell you it's really cool what you're doing yeah. i respect you. you good work i appreciate it yeah. i mean it's a it's uh it's not something that i feel like i'm like strategizing all the time i just something that i feel like i feel compelled to do and i think uh in my household like with my husband he's the same kind of go-getter and the same kind of outreach is important and so it just seems like organic to be as helpful or you know as supportive as we can be and and to the community and to ourselves and to our friends and family and yeah if it is as simple as being you um, recognize that it's inspiring to yeah. others and that it's a wonderful thing Thank to you. be able to create your own life, make your own rules, control as much <laughs> as you want because it's your little ship yeah. you're sailing around in there, Nancy. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, you want to play a game? Sure. You like games? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here we go. The game is called Fast fun mm -hmm. and not so smart it's fast because i'm going to talk fast i'm going to make it seem like things are happening when okay. they're, maybe they're really not it's fun because it's fun playing okay. games why not not All so right. smart because you don't you don't want to think too much just say the thing everybody knows okay. it's a game <laughs> this is fast fun and not so smart with nancy caswell here we go <laughs> favorite book see oh favorite book um, silent bad. patient i just S read it silent patient mm -hmm. not familiar we'll check it out prime rib or kale salad oh, oh boy. Come kale on. salad a really good kale, kale salad, salad. <laughs> yeah. do you love cats uh, no, I don't no, like cats. No, no, the cats. <laughs> they freak That's me out. Good. Cats freak me out. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. If you had to eliminate one state in the United States of America, what state would be gone? Um, Bring it back to 49. I don't feel like I know anybody in Arkansas. <laughs> Let's go with Arkansas. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Can you name two players on the Boston Celtics? Yeah. Go um, ahead. Go ahead. Right, Good. like current, right. like right Jason now. Tatum. Right now. Uh, he's pretty amazing. Okay. And then is you like Marcus. Jason Tatum. Is, is Marcus, it Marcus? Um, is it Marcus? She said, yeah, of course I can. Now Marcus we're at Mark. one and a half. Is he still with us? I have no idea. I don't know one uh. player on the Celtics. 
I, I love the game of basketball. Love Celtics. Though. <laughs> I just haven't been. All right, back to the game. Okay, Are you right, happy right. to be here yeah, right now? Yeah, Is so this all right? Are you happy? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Is this part of the game? <laughs> when it comes to drinks, yeah, it was okay. a part of the game. <laughs> when it comes to drinks, is it one glass or more like seven to nine? Uh, there's like maybe one to two glasses of wine. I'm a lightweight. That's it. Best end of the game? Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> it's pretty good. Wasn't it? It was good. It was good. <laughs> I liked the momentum. C pl on it. I'm, I'm shooting for a C plus with that, and I feel like I got there. Didn't I? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I was sliding off my seat. Uh, so, how do the beautiful humans in the world go about connecting with yeah. you and your social media? It, unless you don't want people. To, no, no, to yeah. Reach so, out to you. Uh, N B Caswell, N B C A S W E L L is all my handles. N B Caswell. Yep. That's which is C A S W E L L. That's all my handles on Instagram, Twitter, um, and then for Facebook, it's just Nancy Caswell. But they all link to my restaurant, so if you want to catch a table there, you can just go directly to them. But it all feeds off me. What are these trucks driving around with the name Caswell on them? Is this uh, tied to that's your whole my husband. entity here? Yeah, plumbing, heating, and HVAC. I see these often. Yeah. They look good. Yeah. yeah he's, they uh, seem to be everywhere. Yeah. yeah. He's a hard worker. I bet. Um, do you have anything in particular that you want to talk about? You know, I mean, not necessarily. I just, you know, if we're rapping, I guess I just would want to tell, like, whoever's listening and stuff, like, just take, you know, take a agency and ultimately think honestly about, like, your experiences. It's try what I try to tell people that come along, you know, whether they're good, bad, indifferent, nothing to be shamed of. Just celebrate, you know, when you've done good and get past it when you've maybe failed at something and, you know, grow from your experiences because that's really how we're going to make it a more peaceful world, right? It's just yeah. literally taking in um, every day and, and reflecting on it and and growing from where we were the, the day before. Are you taking steps every day closer to your own personal bliss yeah i think so i i try my hardest to think about you know if something happens yesterday and it's a challenging day then i definitely am not going to do the same thing the next day i keep myself up at night i refuse to walk into another brick wall if that's <laughs> if that's how it goes um i'm a I like I, I, i'm a i'm a planner for sure so i try to take away from every experience in a thoughtful way um Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks it's been for a good having time. me. I hope yeah. you've enjoyed yourself. Yeah, I have. It's been nice to get I to have. know you. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, I'm glad honestly, you wore the hat for the rest of the time. Yeah, I honestly am a hat person. I don't know if you've seen that. Like, I media. really liked you I a have lot. So many hats. And then you kept the hat on, and yeah. I, the whole time I was like, yeah. I, I kind of like it even more than I no, already did. I love hats. I like seriously collect them, and you will see me wearing wow. them. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much for being here, Nancy. It has been a pleasure. It's time for us to go. Yeah. Everybody out there, I love you, love you, love you. This is Offering Something. My name is Michael Bernia. Um, thanks to our super, super sweet support system at Enjoy Your Life brand, Riverwalk Brewing Company, and the Higher Education Music and Arts Festival. And thank you. You are so beautiful. You are so wonderful. It's your life. Be sure to enjoy that thing, right? Right? It's valuable yeah. to enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. Is this worked into the plan? You're a planner. Yeah. Things to do are enjoy. Enjoy life. Question here I like to ask a lot of people. The goals, right? Mm -hmm. You have goals. Are they written down in a place where you see them every day? Actually, not in your phone. Physically see the goals. No. Okay, that's all. It's just a little piece of research <laughs> that I'm doing. I love you. Thank you Thank for being you. here. Peace to everybody. We will see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>